A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. <clears throat> so Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloths. <clears throat> when the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Then he had proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cow nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has, at, has in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and without his, withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented from the evil that he had threatened to do them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O oh God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offenses. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and from my sin cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O oh God and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. For you are not pleased with sacrifice. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled. O God, you will not spurn. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given to it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented, and there was something greater than Jonah here. 
the gospel of the Lord. I think as, as a parent with children, there is a great desire that every parent longs to experience with their children. You give them an instruction and they do it. That is the greatest heart's desire of every parent. And that they would go away and come back and say it's done. And, not have to tell them a second and a third time. And we're the same way with the Lord, right? Did, did you catch the first line of the first reading? So we got the story of Jonah here, and, and today it really focuses on Jonah going through Nineveh and proclaiming the word of the Lord and the Ninevites responding. But Look at that first line. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. So there was a first time he said, go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, I'm out of here. I'm not going to do it. The Lord is desiring us to respond to him to that thing that he's called us to do and to do it today to do it now he's put something in each of our hearts that he is wanting to move us either away from or deeper into greater level of prayer faithfulness or obedience or someone god is calling you to reach out to let us respond the first time. What is that thing that the Lord has invited us to do? And I think about uh, when I was about 20 years old and the Lord had called me into a full-time ministry and I had responded to the Lord and said, okay, I'll go, but the school that I knew I was supposed to go to, I thought, well, I, that's, it's too expensive. I, I can't go there. I, there's too many, it's too complicated. So I'm going to go to this other one first and I will, it'll be cheaper, it'll be better, it'll be easier. And uh, I knew where the Lord had said to go, but instead I went the other way. And let me tell you, that semester I spent at that other school was a total waste. <laughs> the education, the environment, oh man. And uh, I sold a bunch of stuff that was actually really worth keeping to pay for that semester. And, and it was just, it was a bad deal all the way around. And when I finally got to where the Lord had me to go, uh, then many blessings uh, poured out there, uh, not the least of which was the same school that uh, my soon wife-to-be would be attending. So the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. What is God calling us to do? As Jesus is talking to the people of his day, it's not the fact that they sin that's the problem. It's the fact that the word of the Lord is going out and they are not responding to it what is the lord asking of you today what is he asking of me and let us respond to it amen amen